Hey guys, I'm Pranav Shastri and today's video is all about RJ11 connection and this is a fully detailed video so no matter what type of wire has come in your house or no matter whichever company's telephone socket you have, you'll be able to make the connection successfully after watching this video. Here is the content list I have covered in this video. I have literally covered almost all the scenarios so you can navigate to the needed segment to save time. So to start off with, for identifying the correct telephone wires in a 2 pair cable that is a 4 wire cable, you will need a voltmeter. Firstly, skin all the 4 wires which are visible coming from the wall. Put the multimeter in DC 1 decimal digit mode or in simple words, put it to the 200 option of DC. After skinning them, we shall place one lead of the voltmeter to the blue colored wire and the other lead to the white wires one by one. So here I am getting a voltage between blue wire and the white wire, so that is one pair. If there is no voltage on the blue wire, then we will place one lead on the orange wire and the other lead on the white wires one by one and check. Here you can see that there are no other active pairs. If you get voltage even in the orange pair, that means that in some junction they have just given the same line to both the pairs or you might actually have two active telephone lines for which you will need two sockets to connect. So out of total four attempts of testing, you will get around 48 volts in one combination. That is the active telephone pair and we will connect connect that to the telephone socket terminal. Here is the second case. What if an old 4 pair cat5 LAN cable has come in which there is one active telephone pair? The wires may look scary at first glance but don't worry, it's very easy to find the pair. On newer cables, say cables made around 10 to 12 years ago, they have a small line of color printed on the white wire as well which indicates which color pair it belongs to. If the wires are bunched together or you are able to identify them successfully, then you can just check in which particular pair the voltage is coming and that is your active pair. In case you don't have that color coding done on white wires as you can see here, then you will have to hold one lead on the color wire and put the other lead on all the white wires one by one and check. So that makes a total of 16 trials and you will get a voltage in one of the attempts. If you don't get voltage even now, then you will have to check for voltage between all the wires which means that you will have to try all possible combinations. So here you can see that we have successfully found our pair. Generally by standards, the connection should be given to the blue pair. Now that we have found our active pair, we are going to take all of the remaining wires, cut off the skinned part of the wires and coil it up on the same cable. Also, if you don't have a voltmeter, you can run around some Indian Jugaad by using a 12 volt DC light or something to check instead of a voltmeter. Now coming to the connections, firstly I will be showing you where to connect the wires we have just found on the telephone socket terminals. Anchor Roma is the most popular brand in India hence I will be demonstrating this first. In my personal opinion, I must say that Roma has very nicely labeled the socket terminals so it becomes easy to connect the wires. This is our wall outlet and we are going to skin the wires first so that we can connect it and we have the active telephone pair ready. This is our brand new Roma telephone socket and you can see that there are two lines labeled here clearly. If you look at line number one here, it is actually the second line. So if you see the pin out of an RJ11 connector, they connect to the outer two pins. Line number two is actually the main active line which connects to the center two pins. We should make our connection to line number two. This is our active pair. So we are just going to coil the other wire and keep it. There might be a question in your head saying that which wire is positive and which wire is negative or does that even matter. So don't worry, I have explained that in the next part where I have shown the Schneider electric socket connection. You can go there to hear my explanation on that topic. But in simple words, no, polarity does not matter for telephone sockets if you are using that for the sole purpose of a telephone and not an internet connection. Now we have everything ready, so we are going to be connecting the active pair to line number 2 labeled on the Roma socket. In India, majority of the telephones are single line telephones. Even if they support dual lines, they will take two separate inputs. So even if you have two active lines coming in this two pair wire, you will have to terminate them on two separate telephone sockets unless you purchase a high end telephone unit which takes both the active lines in one input socket. If you need further help about this topic, you can email me and I'll give you better clarity based on your particular scenario. So after connecting the wires to the terminals, I would advise that you connect a telephone first and test if the connection has been made correctly. If yes, then close the wall plate, otherwise you will have to simply remove the wall plate again if it's not working. And there you go, we have successfully connected our Roma RJ11 socket.
Upon testing the line, you can see that dial tone is working and as we trigger the circuit close button, pulse LED is working correctly. Now let us see how to connect the telephone socket manufactured by Schneider Electric which was previously known as Clipsol. This is also one of the leading brands in India and I have been using this since 15 years at my house and I would say that it has superior quality but the downside is that the terminals on the RJ11 socket are not labeled. In this case I am aware about the terminal pinout for this module. If you do not know the terminal pinout for your socket then just hold on. I'll show you how to find it out when I explain the logic for connecting any company's socket. So now coming to the topic of polarity in the telephone line. Telephone line system actually has polarity but it can be ignored. However, I have read about instances on the internet where users reported that their DSL internet connection was malfunctioning when the telephone line was connected with reverse polarity. But if this is only for telephone usage and no internet, then it should work perfectly fine since the ringer system and voice channel everything work in AC in the telephone system. After making our connections, we are going to just tighten any other loose terminals. If there are two cables coming from the wall, that means the connection is further looped to one more place such as a bedroom or somewhere. So in that case, you will have to connect both the wires together, like both the blue wires of the cables together and both the blue white wires of the cable together. So then the connection will be looped further to the bedroom. And after we have made our connection, we are going to secure the socket to our back plate and then secure the plates to the wall. Now coming to the basic logic and industry standard color codes using which you will be able to connect any sort of wiring to any company's telephone socket. Basically you should know that the center two pins in the RJ11 socket is what your telephone uses. From industry standards it is known that pin number 3 is labeled as red and pin number 4 is labeled as green. In terms of LAN cable labeling, pin number 3 and 4 have the blue pair connected to them. In India, I have seen electricians who have connected orange pair in place of blue pair. So it's a little bit messed up in our country, but I must say that the color coding is indeed followed in our country. Leave aside all this theory. Even if your telephone jack has no type of color coding indicated on it, you can find it out. All you have to do is basically check which are the two terminals on the back which connect to the center two pins in the RJ11 pinout. You can do this by taking a multimeter and putting it in the continuity mode. In the continuity mode, put one lead of the multimeter on one of the pins at the back of the socket and the other one in the front side of the RJ11 pinout and like that reverse engineer and find out which are the two terminals at the back which are connected to the center two pins in the RJ11 socket. So you can see here that after successfully reverse engineering this module, we have found the two terminals at the back which connect to the center two pins in the front. So that brings us to the end of this video. I wanted to make this video since 2 to 3 years now but then now I finally found the time to make it and I've made it in a fully detailed manner so that no more doubts come in your mind but if you still have any doubts in your mind then please do comment that and I'll try my level best to solve it. But probably in another 10 years from now all these RJ11 sockets and wiring everything will become obsolete because fiber broadband is there now and what they do is they give fiber till the customer's premises and then there's an ONT modem given over there which has a telephone jack. So all the customer has to do is just connect a RJ11 patch card to the modem and they have their telephone service operational. So they don't have to take the hassle of all these kind of uh, RJ11 wall jack connections unless you want to put that RJ11 output from the ONT modem into your entire house looping so that you have the same telephone connection available in all your bedrooms or wherever. So yeah, then probably my video will come handy to you 10 years later in 2032 as well. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next RJ45 video coming out that also I have made in full detail both keystone type and screw type and I will also be making a video on detailed home network Wi-Fi signal problem solution so a lot is coming out soon so stay tuned yeah bye bye.